Hey guys and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be filming a life lessons I learned in 2021 video. I recently was journaling and I just thought of a bunch of new life lessons I learned. And then I got this really cool best year journal and it has you list all the life lessons from the year. And I was like, wow, there's a lot of things I can put down on here. So I just thought, why not make it a video? Because I love things related to personal growth, self-development, things like that. And so I'm really excited to share this video with you guys. So let's get started. So let's get into my first of six life lessons. The first one is pretty simple, but it took me a while to realize. You can't control what other people do or what the weather's like. All of those variables are really out of your hands. But the one thing you can control is your reaction to them. So I was listening to a podcast. The podcast host, she was talking about one of her friends who went to visit her family for Christmas and her family's very negative. And so her and her mom set out to kind of like do a little challenge where they both were like uber positive the entire weekend. And instead of having like a bad time like they usually would if they kind of let themselves be brought down by the other's negativity, their positivity they projected really helped them to have a great weekend. It really goes to show that it really depends on your attitude and your outlook. And if you really decide to attack things with positivity, then you can really just change your perspective and change like really the outcome. Because like I said, if they had chosen to kind of let themselves be dragged down by by everyone else's negative attitudes, then they wouldn't have had the good weekend like they have. And furthermore, by producing high vibes and like sending positivity out into the world, you really do receive more of what you want and you kind of attract that same energy. The next one is that your phone is a huge distraction and it's really important to just put it away, out of sight, out of mind. I always have struggled through this in the past and sometimes when I'm doing my homework, I'll have it next to me. And even when it's on silent, just it sitting there has been a distraction. Another thing I've started to do over the course of the past three months is I've been doing no social media Sundays. So I've been going on social media on Sundays, pretty self-explanatory. But at first I was kind of afraid because I'm like, I want to miss out. I was just getting like major FOMO and I'm like, oh my, my gosh, like what if someone posts something and then, and then I don't see it and then blah, 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 blah. And I kind of was make up excuses and just go on my phone anyways. But I've come to the realization recently that like, honestly, you're not missing out at the end of the day. Because like the best life experiences happen face to face when you're laughing with your best friends, when you're driving with the windows down, however basic those may seem. Like none of those activities really require your phone. And like the best, like most happiest moments of your life aren't gonna be on your phone. And then also I've noticed like when I go on my phone, take a break from doing my homework. And I say it's gonna be a five minute break and then it's a 20 minute break on TikTok. Afterwards, like going on TikTok or other like simulating apps, I don't get a sense of relaxation like I would have if I were to have spent those five minutes reading a book or literally just sitting there or maybe talking with my family. I don't experience that recharge. I instead feel like more stimulated and honestly like more stressed out. Then I'm like, oh, I don't wanna do my homework. I just don't wanna do anything. And it really just like messes with my motivation. So it's really just best to put your phone away when you're trying to focus. Next one is something that I've actually realized really recently. And it's that your worst days may be someone's best days. And someone else's best days may be your worst days. It doesn't make sense to like compare yourself to other people. I'm seriously like realizing like I was doing a workout with my mom. We did an orange theory. I remember this one time where she was like, oh my gosh, it was such a great class. Like I really liked it. She's like, I felt so strong afterwards. And I felt kind of like defeated because I was like, this is a really hard workout for me. I just felt like weak and I felt like I couldn't do a lot of the movements. And I found myself looking over my mom and like, how is she so energetic? Like, how is she like doing so well? And like, that can happen vice versa. Like my mom has said to me like, oh my gosh, like, wow, you're so good on like the rower, like during Orange Theory. And I'm like, oh really? I'm just so focused on like what I'm doing that like I'm not noticing other people. And that's when I feel like I do the best when I'm just focusing on my own progress and I'm not paying attention to like, oh my gosh, other people are doing so much better than me. Or like, I'm kind of noticing people are so much farther along on the school project than me. And I just focus like on, okay, this is my timeline. I'm gonna work on my project this way. It just goes so much more smoothly. And then also like your best is gonna kind of differ from day to day. So it's also important not to compare yourself to yourself. Some days, you may sleep for 10 hours and still be tired and that's okay. It's it's important to like give yourself what you need. Like I'm not saying like abandon all your priorities and just do nothing, but like if you need a little bit of recharge, like definitely take it. Like that's what I've been doing all this winter break. It's been amazing. Another one is 
Really, you will never, ever, ever regret being kind. And the only time that you really like regret what you've said is like when you're spreading rumors or you're talking about drama that really doesn't concern you. Being kind is just gonna benefit you so much more in the long run. And it's not only gonna benefit you and make you just feel better about what you're putting out into the world, but it's also gonna make other people feel good too. And people will wanna be around you more, you know what I mean? If you're not spreading rumors, if you're instead just like being super kind, and then you can just kind of live life with a lot less regrets. So the next one I've noticed kind of goes along with the last one. It's that affirmations really do work. And this is from my own personal experience. I know some people really don't believe that affirmations work, but at least in my own life, they have really, really worked. Every morning, I try to read a list of affirmations that I have hung up in my room, and I think it really just reminds me what my kind of core values are and like what's important to me. It makes me kind of more likely throughout the day to, to choose things like subconsciously. Like for example, like if I say like, I eat healthy, I make sure to have at least a few servings of grains every day, I subconsciously am gonna make choices that are going to end up with me having more fruits and veggies throughout the day. So just things like that, like if you consistently repeat affirmations over time, they're gonna stick and they're gonna help you, you know, just become a better person. So my second to last one is that starting is the hardest part. This really applies to almost anything in life. Tackling a big school project, working on your college applications, starting a workout. Seriously, after you just start and get some ideas down, it really just gets easier from there. Like once you put on your gym clothes, you drive to the gym, you get out, maybe just start doing some stretching and then a little bit of cardio, it just slowly starts to get easier and then you're like, wow, I'm so happy I did this. At least for me, the introductory paragraph of an essay is always the hardest paragraph. And once I get done with that paragraph, I'm like, wow, I have a thesis, I have background, I have everything I need. Like, I am ready to go, ready to finish the rest of this essay. Seriously, like starting is always the hardest part. You may encounter some challenges along the way, but once you have your idea down and you're ready to go, like, seriously, you're gonna feel so much better. Okay, so I said that was my second to last one, but that was actually my last one. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys learned something from it. Obviously, I know I'm a 17 year old girl. I know I have a lot of life to experience still, but this is just a few of the lessons that I've learned from the past year that I really hope can help you guys out. And one last piece of advice I'm gonna leave you guys with is seriously, take what you need and leave the rest. My English teacher said that to our class and I think it's really so true. Like, take what you guys need from this video. Like, maybe some of these lessons don't really like apply in your life. I try to make them pretty general, but you know what I mean. Like, take the most important lessons and really just try to apply them to your life. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.